In this video, we're going to review several different control panels I've made with various analog throttle options, button combinations, but I also wanted to do a sneak peek of my custom control panel that I've upgraded for myself with a Cecil Hap throttle, a Tron stick, and a power switch that turns all the buttons on in one go. Beautiful. Let's get started. So here's my base mod with four buttons only, no internal built-in throttle, so you have to use an external throttle. Or you can still play Battle Pod, but when you set your throttle to a button, what happens is you'll see that it stays stuck and thrust the whole time. So if you want to do the base mod, I do recommend having an external throttle somehow to enjoy this game the best as possible. You could still play this game at what I call kind of full speed mode. So as soon as I hit this throttle button that I set to this button, it's going to start the game itself but you won't actually be able to control it and move it forward and back. So you see the lines that are streaking. So the lines are streaking essentially and uh, it's kind of stuck in that mode. You're going to be stuck in full acceleration the whole entire game. There's not much you can do about it. So um, I got to inverse the controls on this too as well. But this is just to show you. You can still play and enjoy the game. Uh, but for a true experience, it's better to actually have a throttle there. So you can't undo it unfortunately. It's just going to stay stuck in that mode. Um, so it's just full full speed battle pod with streaking lines all the way. So you can still enjoy this game. Uh, you just won't have the actual throttle analog experience like you would in the game itself. So that's just an example of playing Star Wars Battle Pod with the base mod. If you don't have an external uh, throttle, again I do recognize or recommend uh, the internal built-in throttle now that I have several different options that you've seen. So this is the base mod. Alright, so this is my advanced control panel mod here with four buttons, a start and coin, as well as an ultra stick 360 flight stick here. So the yoke works just as your navigation. This is going to be your dedicated throttle. Um, so you're not really using the buttons for anything. You're just using the analog stick for throttle and brake. So once we get started with everything, you'll see that uh, you can use the yoke for everything that you need to. Uh, and this is just going to be your throttle. All right, so throttle to go forward. And let's do some gameplay so you can see up, down, left, right motion. You got your throttle forward and your brake motion. Um, so it's up to you if you want to play this one-handed. Sometimes I like to play this one-handed and use the throttle with your dedicated left hand. So that makes it that much more fun. But let's see. You got your trigger right here. You got your secondary weapon there. Let's take out some TIE Fighters. Boom. So you can see your, thr your thruster moving forward and brake. And if you're in range long enough, you can use your secondary weapon to fire missiles at everybody too. Boom. Okay. Nice. Throttle through, brake. So yeah, this is the gameplay using the Ultra Stick 360. It's a great stick, really sturdy. Um, so it's really fun to use as well. So it works perfectly. Uh, with battle pod setup. So that's the Ultra Stick 360 in the advanced mod. All right, this is my premium control panel mod with all the LED buttons marked down here with the custom radar button. And this is an Ultra Stick 360 uh, regular joystick on the top right hand side. So the client here wanted the joystick on the top right. And so I used the trigger button on the left hand side so he can use the throttle on his right hand instead. So it's really up to you uh, in terms of where you want to place your buttons, what options you have. So uh, this is just another setup with the premium buttons that look really clean. So we're going to test this out. Throttle works just the same as the other ones as well. So this is a really nice Ultra Stick 360 joystick. Everything else works fine as well. Uh, the cool thing about the Ultra Stick 360 is that it has a built-in encoder. So you can actually map other buttons to this joystick. So I actually have these set up as a player 2 joystick buttons for this. Uh, it doesn't work with this game, but uh, you can do that with other games if you want to. So here you go. Let's see if I can do this left-handed. So I got my yoke one-handed. I got thrust up and down. So forward, break. So you're really only using an analog th uh, throttle for Battle Pod. It's the, it's the main game. There's another game that's very similar to this. It's almost an exact clone. It's called Mock Storm. And it uh, uses the throttle as well in a similar fashion, similar gameplay, except you're flying, I think, an F-14 or an F-16 uh, and fighting down shooting down 
actual uh, airplanes and things. So this is a uh, battle pod gameplay with a Ultra Stick 360 joystick and the premium mod. Really clean. So here's another premium mod that I did with all the different control panel options. I did two little buttons here. And this client wanted a double analog joystick mod. So we're actually going to be testing playing Battle Pod, not using the yoke at all, but using this as the joystick to move your actual screen. And this is your throttle. Um, the thing is, with these particular joysticks, you do have not, not a lot of cleared space on the sides, but you should be able to play lightly with it if you wanted to do this. So a uh, great thing about Technoparrot and the, the, the emulator that runs this, you can map controls to whatever buttons you want to. Uh, so it's up to you in terms of what you want to use, but let's just test this out and see how it works out. Um, so right now, you can kind of see I have this set up to up, down, um, so it's almost like a mouse instead of a, being in reverse settings, but you can change this to actually be reversed too. But this is your fire button, this is your, your jump, this is your throttle. Uh, so let's just test it out some gameplay using uh, this as the actual uh, joystick. So I mean you can play Battle Pod however you want to using this mod. So this is pretty cool. So if you don't want inverse settings and you kind of want to just make this a joystick that kind of follows the screen up and down left right. So you can kind of just follow through this way. So this is your thruster. This is your brake. You can thrust in, shoot. So uh, you could still use the, th uh, the yoke if you wanted to, but if you have a dual throttle, uh, I'm going to show you case another game that you can play. I have a particular dual stick setup for this mod to be able to play some other games using the dual stick setup. So we're going to back out of this. Uh, if you want to back out of a game, all you got to do is push the start and select button at the same time. It'll back out into your big box menu. So that's a really nice thing to navigate. You use this button to continue to back out. Uh, let's go into a dual stick game. Alright, here's some classic dual stick games here that we have to sample. Uh, Virtual On is one of my favorites. Two classic tank games called Assault and Vindicators and some classic battle zone action. So these are just different samples of dual stick gameplay you can use with this setup. Alright, so here's my actual original control panel, the very first one that I modded. I actually upgraded it and this was my test panel that I added the premium buttons in here, moved my starting coin over here, and I tried out a new analog stick. This was, I had so many options for analog sticks. This is a, a pentiometer uh, analog stick that is uh, pretty cheap. It's only about 15 bucks plus a few bucks for shipping from China. Uh, I had to take it apart to install it so it's like this mini little joystick here, but it actually functions really, really well. So for a cheap analog joystick that you can map to your Player 2 APAC, works really well for for your throttle and your brake too. So I'm going to play just a little bit of gameplay with this throttle. Again, you really only need the built-in throttle for Battle Pod and another game called Mock Storm. Um, so it's really up to you. So this is the cheapest, best working analog battle that I can find. It just takes a little bit of uh, know-how to take it apart and uh, plug in the uh, potentiometers into the APAC here. So you can see, you can use the throttle to, to accelerate, to brake, um, but it works just fine. It's actually pretty sturdy. Really, uh, really uh, good quality for a cheap analog stick uh, for less than 20 bucks. So this is going to be your cheapest option if you want to actually get a real working analog throttle. And there you have it. So just some gameplay testing out this uh, small throttle that you can see right in the left hand corner there. One last analog joystick option I didn't have built into a control panel is this SJ at JX um, analog joystick. And it comes in a set with this extra joystick here, as well as all these buttons here. Um, it's just a sandwall top, and then it comes with an encoder board like this, where you can plug it in and get everything mapped out to a USB encoder to your PC. Um, so the thing with this is, is that the springs aren't that strong, and so it was really loose when I had it installed. I didn't really like it as I had it angled, and I didn't like the ball top on it either. So I tried to buy all these different shift knob options here that you can see if I can attach to it, but the problem was these were too heavy for it, and it made it sag. Um, and so I thought these would look cool in the actual control panel itself, uh, but I didn't end up using it because I realized that the analog spring was too loose for it to hold up any of these types of T-handles. Um, so that's why I'm really glad I found that Suzo Hap Analog Throttle. I wanted to mention that you could use this. It's the easiest plug-and-play analog throttle stick, 
but I wouldn't recommend it because it's really loose. It comes with all these extra buttons that you don't need. Um, it's one of the, the cheaper analog sticks that are available. It's only 40 bucks for a plug and play analog stick. You don't have to mount anything into your APAC, um, but I really can't recommend it too much um, unless you want just a very, very simple joystick. I'd rather go with the Ultra Stick 360 that it's just $20 more. So that's just some options for you. And I have all these shift knobs that I'm not going to be using because, yep, let's see if we can return them instead. So this is it. This is the cab that started it all. And I made so many mods to my original control panel, I wanted to redo the whole thing. So thanks to a couple of folks that made it possible. Uh, Dan Mebep for letting me borrow his original cab to mod and test, as well as Sterling Campbell who got me this beautiful analog uh, throttle from Cecil Hap, which is a return to center spring that if you move it forward, it drops back to center. It works great as a throttle and brake. So I move it forward to accelerate. It has a button here you can map to whatever and um, added all these premium buttons here, some little small ones that I really liked. But check this out. This is kind of my favorite design that I did was uh, I added a Tron joystick and mapped it to a, uh, or mounted it to an Ultra Stick 360 joystick. So this is a really stiff joystick that actually held the weight of this. I added some extra buttons here that I can use for my secondary stuff. But now I have a hands-on and throttle joystick that's very similar to the original arcade game. I can, uh, you know, play just like I did with one hand on the throttle and one hand on a joystick uh, in the arcade when playing this game. And so I had to mount it a little bit higher as you can see. It's, uh, it's super high because um, I needed it to clear the side of the wall of the cabinet itself. But this is really fun. I, I really enjoy playing <clears throat> Battle Pod with a, a stick like this. And the great thing is I can use this for other games that I want to too. If I wanted to play Star Wars Trilogy, which also used more of a joystick configuration than a yoke, I can do it too. And uh, you, with a cab like this, all your emulators, you always have the option of changing. And if I wanted to play and go back playing Star Wars Battle Pod or Trilogy using the yoke, I can absolutely do it. Um, so this is more, more or less up to you in terms of how you want to play your game. Um, so this is just another fun way to play. So thanks again for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed looking at all the different options for your control panels. Um, I had a blast doing these, so I appreciate folks trusting me to, uh, you know, do commissions and, and work on their mods for them. Um, but hope you guys enjoy this video. I'm going to finish this out, play this last piece, and uh, please like and subscribe. Hope you guys enjoy. Thanks. Boom. There it is. Thanks.